Hi guys, welcome to another episode of my podcast, the Build Muscle and Burn Fat, episode 69, if I'm not wrong. And hopefully you have enjoyed this series so far. So what we're going to talk about today, we're going to get straight into it just to make sure that we can give you the benefit and especially upgrade your training. Now, I think this is going to be in theme with the time of the year when I release this episode. It's going to be talking about the ways that I like to train to keep things interesting, but even saying that when you are running a short on time, because we're coming to the new year period and Christmas is now officially five days from now. It's Tuesday the 21st as the time of this recording. And this is where people tend to fall off and they go, I can't train anymore or I just don't do it anymore. And unfortunately, this leads to January where we do get a lot of um, people who say that they're just falling off the bandwagon. And the best thing that you can do for yourself is to make sure you never stop. But when people forget that they can't do the right thing, they will just forget it altogether. And the biggest mindset is to make sure that you pivot or find more tools that you can put into your toolbox to help you with the goal at mind. So just to give you a bit of a side note, I'm trying to practice doing these podcasts in a video format as well. And I'm trying to make sure I use the same format every single time, but second time in and I've already messed it up because I've left my iPad at work. I'm now recording on a microphone through my iPhone instead. My camera settings are different because of lighting, and these are all things that I've needed to adapt and learn, might I add. And now I'm you know, playing around with a, a camera, oh, sorry, with a pen on a camera. And the last time when I was doing this, I was actually not looking directly into the lens. So I have to just try and get better 1% each time. Without any more delay, let's go into five little things that you can do during your busy periods, but even saying that, just five little things that I like to do to upgrade my training, especially when I'm busy on time or just want to be able to feel good, get some more gains, and even just saying that, get more bang for my buck, so to speak. There's always gonna be a time and place for you to implement these, so you shouldn't be doing it every single week, but when you can use it with the right implementation, it's going to work really effectively. And the first one I'm going to talk about is what we call the AMRAP. Now, for those of you who don't know what AMRAP means, this means as many reps as possible. And as the name suggests, you do as many reps as possible. But it's not as simple as that. How I do it, anyway, I'm going to show you how I do it, and then I'm going to go through why it's really effective. So with the AMRAP, I like to tend to do it on the last set. So for example, we're doing a T-bar row. Uh, the program calls for three sets of eight to 10 reps on the third set perform an AMRAP. This would mean that the first two sets I would perform as normal, eight to 10 reps given the RPE scheme or the reps in reserve. For most times, I will put this as two reps in reserve. Then on the third set, I would still keep the same weight. I would do three sets of eight to 10 reps, two reps in reserve with the same weight that I did for sets one and two, at the end of the eighth to 10th rep, I'll take a breather for 10 to 15 seconds, and then once again, try and perform as many as possible. Now, for some people out there, you may have heard this in different contexts as well. One of them is what we call a Maya rep, where people try and perform a close to failure set, they take a breather for 10 to 15 seconds, and once again, try and perform as many reps as possible close to failure. This once again is about trying to get the grinder reps in so that you force the muscular growth, so to speak, but even saying that overload the nervous system. And I highly recommend if you're going to do that with something like a squat or bench press that you have a spotter, you know what you're doing, have high amounts of experience, or altogether just change the exercise to be something safer because you don't want to be failing on a back squat and hurting yourself because that will once again uh, to five of the reasons why we're doing these things. Another context you may have heard an AMRAP though is saying, hey look, here's 10 minutes, here are three exercises, and perform as many as you can, as many rounds as possible, as opposed to as many reps as possible. Same thing, I guess, in the grand scheme of things, but you would perform three exercises that are contrarily different, so to speak. So it's kind of like a circuit. You may have one doing a goblet squat, 
one station doing a push-ups and another one doing a Romanian deadlift, so to speak. Or targeting different muscle groups to give you the same effect, but making sure one doesn't quite hinder the other one. And you would set some sort of rep scheme to all of them. Maybe it's 10 reps, 8 reps, 6 reps, or just all 3 sets or all 3 exercises as 10 reps. And you just keep chipping at it. So that's one thing that you can do with an AMRAP. Now this was typically going to be programmed for people who use my programs anyway, but for yourself, if you're finding yourself short in time, perform those AMRAPs so that you can actually get something done instead. Maybe if you only have 10 minutes, this is a great way to get things done. And this is why I always say to people, if you really, really wanted it, if you really had the time and really committed to it, no matter how much time that you have, an AMRAP is always an effective tool and you will get a workout in if you want it. The next one that we've got is a superset. Now, I always tell people, when should I have supersets? And I typically don't program supersets, but it's a good tool to have and understand when to use it. So routing a program during the round this time, I won't change the program for people who are busy or on Christmas break, but I say, hey, look, these are your seven exercises. You can see a main compound on the first one, and then you can see maybe a an exercise where it's a machine chest press and a lat pull down you can superset those two exercises because those two exercises aren't as directly correlated to each other so to speak your arms might get sore but you'll get a really good workout and a superset is effectively you going from machine chest press to lat pull down and you just continue that you rest and then you do it again this way you actually half your training time for you to get the somewhat same effect now, there are downfalls to this movement as well, and when you're doing this superset, just be aware that when you're doing supersets, your weight overall will have to decrease. So let me explain that a little bit more clearly. If you're doing a machine chest press and you're hitting 30 kilos for 10 reps, and you would usually do that for three sets, then you go into a lat pull down. This is without the superset, might I add. Then you go to a lat pull down, and because you can pull more than you can push, you're doing 45 kilos for 10 reps. Now, if you were to superset these two exercises, your first exercise, the machine chest press, which you usually do with 30 kilos, you probably be doing roughly around 25 kilos because now the fatigue is there, you're not resting as much, and you're going straight into a lap pull down, and that 45 kilos may decrease to 37 and a half or 40, maybe roughly around 10% as a rule of thumb. This is going to start to build some fatigue in those muscles or those hydrogen ions for those of you out there who like to geek out on the science. And that's where the fatigue factor comes in. It's a different style of training for your body and you might feel really sore the next day. Still getting the workout done though, and this is where it's really effective, making sure that we can pivot the mindset to still give you the great result that you look for to get healthier and fitter, but also making sure you're not letting yourself succumb to your old habits of just giving up. Now this is one of my favorite ways to get another one, the third one, the old drop set. Now this one here can be a little bit confusing and I, I would admit myself that I got confused when I first started doing this because there was no clear concise rule and that's the first thing I'm gonna to say to you guys. When you're doing a drop set, you may not know where to drop but as you get better with experience, you'll find out what's gonna work well for you. So let's actually get into the drop set and what it is first before I give you an example of how to implement this. I'm going to use the bench press because who doesn't like a good old bench press, right? So let's go with a barbell bench press. It's going to be three sets of eight to 10 reps on the third set. Let's perform a drop set. So your first two sets you would perform as normal. And then on the third set, this is how you perform that drop set. You would then do the first, sorry, you will first perform the third set as normal, eight to 10 reps given RPE. Then you would drop one weight down. How much you drop by is gonna be dependent on what you can do. Some people may actually load this to work in their favor. So for example, if you're doing say a 100 kilo bench press and instead of using 220s, you start loading up some 10s instead. That way you can just drop one plate and perform a drop set from there but this is always going to be dependent on what your overall strength is going to be. And as a rule of thumb for people out there, I tend to choose roughly around 10%, as most things, as good as we can. 
but this is gonna be dependent on, once again, you. I'm gonna be saying that quite a lot. So say if you're doing a 100 kilo bench press, you do the third set, eight to 10 reps with 100 kilos, you hit 10 reps, you're cooked after that, you're absolutely exhausted, but you have three drop sets to do. Your first drop set, you drop 10 kilos on each side, you're now doing 80 kilos, if I'm correct, and that'd be quick math. Then you perform as many reps as possible, have a bit of rest, rack it up, drop 10 kilos again on each side, you're now doing 60 from the top of my head, and then you perform another many rep, as many reps as possible. So from the top, you did one top set, you did one drop back to an 80, one drop to a 60, and that's a two drop set, or two drop sets, should I say. So you would need to find out what's gonna work well for you with this one, because like I said, some of these movements will be, will be dependent on what your overall strength is going to be. Say for example, if I'm doing a Bulgarian split squat, and I'm doing it with a 17 and a half kilo on one side, I have quite a bit of play to go down to a 10 kilo or a 7.5 kilo. But say if someone who is struggling to be able to get their drop sets because they don't use any weight on a Bulgarian, what you can do is you can implement a different exercise to the same effect. So this could be a Bulgarian split squat body weight into drop set of a split squat with a foot back on the floor and this will still give you the same effect as a drop set because you now can perform more than you previously could. That's the whole point, just to be able to push out more reps. Now, before we get to the fourth one, I'd really appreciate it if you could help me out here by just leaving a review on my podcasts because to be honest, I'm not gonna run any ads on this. I just want people out there to be able to learn how to train and get the most out of it. That's literally all I'm doing this for. So if you're on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or even Google Podcasts, give us a five-star review. Don't be afraid to obviously share this as well. That's what we want everyone to do. I want this podcast to be able to help people out there as much as possible without having to pay a dollar, to be honest. Okay, we're getting there now. This is our last one. Oh, sorry, this is our fourth one. And this is about tempo reps. Now, if you've been following me for some time now, you know that I'm a big fan of tempo. I'm a big fan of tempo because when you get to you know, heavier weights, eventually your joints end up being the thing that limit you because it hurts. There has been research to show that there is no difference between muscular hypertrophy between a tempo of normal all the way up to eight seconds. Now me personally, I think this is quite fascinating because from when I was growing up, it's always about eccentric training. But when we look between the lines, some people may say that this is a waste of time to do tempo. That is incorrect. Because if you start to think about it, if there is no muscular hypertrophy between the tempos of one to eight, that means you can actually work your muscles with less weight using higher tempos to get the same effect. And this works really well for people who have joint pain. Because if you can't load up 100 kilos on your back, but you can still do it with a 60 kilo weight for eight seconds on the way down and still get the same muscular hypertrophy effect, that means we found new ways to be able to grow muscle. This is amazing because not only that, now you're strengthening other supporting structures because we know that higher tempo based work is gonna help better with mobility as well as strengthening tendons as well. So that's really, really cool to know. Now, for those of you out there, how do you start implementing tempo into your reps? And I used to be a really big fan of doing things like eight seconds on the way down, 10 seconds on the way down. Although they do have their merit, I found that they are mentally exhausting. And by the end of the workout, you actually have a bit of a CNS overload. So this is where I liked to use maybe roughly around three to five seconds. And this is more than enough for anybody to be able to train and still get really good gains out of it. Not even saying that, you start to get really good balance through your structure as well. So this is where, and I'm gonna go through this a little bit later on on how you can actually use tempo with the multiple other factors of AMRAPs as well as drop sets to help you get more out of your training sessions. But first of all, I like to use most of my tempos from the eccentric because there are three ways that you can load it. And if you want to know more information about this, I won't do it in today's podcast because this will go on forever, which is the reason why I love talking about this stuff. Put a microphone in front of me and I'll teach you as much as I can. 
But if you want to know more about Tempo, please just don't be afraid to email me and I'll put it all in the show notes and descriptions as well. But typically we're using exercises, say for example, uh, let's go with a Bulgarian split squat once again, and we're going for three seconds on the way down. This will give you a great stretch in your posterior leg or the leg on the bench because you're stretching that hip flexor, which most people tend to have really tight. Then when we're leaning forward, you can actually get the load of the quad on the left leg as well. Benefits on both sides. And when you're not using something as heavy, say some people can load up as, as much as 40 kilos on each side, including myself, but the balance becomes an issue. And then when you get heavier and heavier, your lower back starts to limit you, your grip strength starts to limit you. So we want to try and load up those quads without having to load up those joints. And so I can probably get the same effect using something like 30 kilos on a Bulgarian split squat instead of having to use 40 kilos too, where it just gets a little bit awkward in terms of trying to hold it because it's such a large dumbbell. Now for the last one, we're talking about every minute on a minute which is something that you may have seen more popularly done if you're into Olympic weightlifting or even in CrossFit as well. And I was introduced mostly into this from the CrossFit space. Every minute on the minute is going to be using exercises or a simple based exercise that can get your heart rate up. And to simply put, if I were to give you say push-ups for 20 reps every minute on the minute for 10 minutes, It means that you can perform 20 push-ups and whatever you remainder of that minute is what you're going to rest. So if it takes you 40 seconds, you get 20 seconds rest. Then on the new minute, when it hits zero, zero, it's time for you to perform your next round and you're going to be doing 10 rounds. Now you can do this with a trifecta of exercises up to three or more if you really want to. I highly wouldn't recommend more than three because it's going to get very complex, so to speak. I would recommend somewhere between one or two. I'm oh, sorry, one to three, which is why I said don't go more than three. So you might be doing exercises like a skipping for how many reps you might do, double wonders, then push ups for a certain amount of reps, and then squats for a certain amount of reps. And you can do as many of those EMOM rounds as possible. This is great because it's not supposed to absolutely smash you in the pants, it's actually just meant to help you condition yourself so you're controlling some factors as well. Now this is going to take some learning for you guys and personally I don't use a lot of EMOMs but it is one of my favorite ones to give to a lot of clients when I'm training them so that they can get a good workout if they're short on time. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how you can start to combine some of these exercises and some of these protocols to get a really good workout. So my favorite one that I like to do first is the tempo reps. So what I would do for a particular person, and I have done this in some of my programs as well, for those of you who have not done them, you can find out if you want to learn or do some of my programs on my website. But say if I were going to do a barbell bench press, three sets of eight to 10 reps with tempo three seconds on the way down. That's a lot to remember. On the third set then, I would then perform a AMRAP, but this time I would drop the tempo. And for those of you who don't remember, the tempo sets will go for sets one, two, and three, and an AM rep is going to be as many reps as possible. So when we get to the third set, you do your eight to 10 reps with tempo, you rack it up, have a bit of a breather, and then you would perform as many reps as possible, but this time without the tempo. This is kind of like a drop set as well as I was mentioning before, because before you were doing them with a harder way to do it, so to speak, and then you're making it easier by removing the tempo because a drop set is effectively dropping the intensity so that you can get more reps in. And I've done this with a drop set plus an AMRAP as well. And that's one of the favorite things I love doing about training. Another way you can do is a bit of a contrast with drop training or drop set training, should I say. So you can start to do drop sets with two combinations of exercises where one's easier than the other. So let's go with a a pull-up for people with a band. First, you're gonna do as many pull-ups as possible with no band. Then you're gonna use a band straight away or an assistance machine if you need to and perform as many reps as possible and you start to get a better effect of trying to fatigue yourself in less amount of time. Now, you can start to play around with these things and I wouldn't use them every single week. In phasic training, we like to do this probably every third to fourth week so that your body can actually recover. 
because each week should not be the exact same training. Each week should have some sort of contrast, even if it's an extra set or even one set less. It also means that having less weight to periodize the intensity so your body can recover. Because eventually when your fatigue starts to build up, your recovery is going to meet too and fatigue will overwhelm how your body is going to recover. And if you have too much fatigue and not enough recovery, this is where injuries tend to happen or when people start to burn out, so to speak. So just be aware of that. Guys, I hope you enjoyed this episode. This was a really fun one for me and I've really started to think that this is going to be the way that I would like to teach people out there because I can produce a lot of podcasts or video podcasts and talk about these things to you with a lot less production value that I have to do when I was doing YouTube videos. Anyway, guys, all I can say is that if you are enjoying this and you have learned something out of it, no matter what platform you want from Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, or even on YouTube, just give this video a thumbs up, drop a comment, and don't be afraid to email me if you have any questions or topics that you want me to cover for you. Thanks, everybody, and keep building momentum.